Okay guys, I'm here today with Marcus Chinoco, huge honor for me. Guys, today we're gonna work here on the coolest technique, cool, coolest jiu-jitsu technique that I learned from Fabio Gurgel. So my instructor, so I went to Sao Paulo in 2009 when I was a black belt and I trained under Fabio from 2009 to 2013. Then I went to New York City to train with Marcellus. But uh, uh, I'm still part of the Alliance and the and Fabio was always uh, the person on my corner, the person, one of the people that are learning the most jiu-jitsu. And today I'm gonna share here with you guys one detail that he taught me that uh, was like mind blowing when I learned it. And it's such like a small and simple detail that I think everybody can learn like right away and start using. And uh, like when I moved to Sao Paulo, like uh, the thing that I got the most impressed about Fabio, uh, he was great with attacks, he was great with submissions, passing sweeps. But his escapes and his defense were simply like amazing, you know, like he had the best escapes that I've ever seen. And then when I got in Sao Paulo, I remember that if someone passed my guard, I would stay in side control like this, right? And then I would try to place this hand here, a little bit on top of the shoulder to avoid wrist locks and this and that. But then Fabio told me that instead of keeping the hand here, it's much better to keep this hand over here, okay? Just keep the hand on your chest. But you might be questioning yourself, why should I do that? Okay, and I'm gonna explain why. So the reason why is because when we have our hand here, we're risking to get the wrist lock, right? Marcus can tap with the wrist lock. And on top of that, I'm completely away from the two main escapes that I have. What are the two main escapes that I have? One is to bridge, hip escape, and get the other hook, right? And the other one is to bridge, hip escape, and bring the legs in, okay? When we have our hand on our chest, first of all, there is no risks of wrist lock whatsoever. Second, there is no way Marcus can involve this arm over here and start attacking this arm, okay? Because my hand is on my chest. Mm -hmm. Third, when I bridge and hip escape, I'm halfway through to get the underhook. Okay, and fourth, guys, we have this illusion here that when we bridge, we should also do a bench press over here, mm -hmm. which is not true. All I need to do is to bridge as high as I can, and now I can, I, I can use my forearm and my elbow to just keep my opponent away from me, almost like a shield, look. I use my bottom left arm, and I use my forearm here against his chest. And now I have this whole space here, either to bring my leg in or to get the other hook and turn on the knee, okay? So I learned from Fabio that there is no reason for us to keep this hand here on my opponent's shoulder. All I'm doing here is risking to be tapped by a wrist lock mm -hmm. or risking the chance that Marcus can involve my arm or even that Marcus can put his head underneath my arm and go to the katagatami. So no reason to keep this hand here. So all we should do is pay attention. This hand always stays on my chest. And now it's much harder for Marcus to control my side control. So guys, once I learned that, I don't think I ever stay on side control anymore without my hand on my chest. If any time I feel that my opponent's passing my guard first, uh, passing my guard, first thing I'm gonna do is to keep my hand on my chest and keep my both elbows closed and I feel much safer now. So, That's what are your thoughts, Marcus? It's, you insulated all the options that I wanted the underhook, I wanted the wrist lock. For me to get something, I had to create space to try explore the arm, which gives you the space to escape. That's very interesting. Yeah, I never so, saw that before. It was Yeah, and the, you, you, you don't have many options you to attack, have, right? Exactly. Like, and the, That's the main options. Yeah, and, and then you blink over there, I escape. You escape, like, exactly. Like so, your, your hands are halfway to the underhook and halfway to push that way and for me to explore the arm I might have to create a little space to get under the arm to bring the hands away which gives you the opportunity to escape that was really, no, was I really agree. impressed was really yeah nice. and guys I used to joke with uh, Fabio that uh, he should compete a tournament and instead of working on a takedown or pull guard he should pull everybody to the side That's control, control. <laughs> yeah. I think he will make everybody so frustrated that they literally can attack, exactly. that uh, he would be able to do very well. Of course, I was just joking, like never pull anybody to the side <laughs> control. But, uh, but yeah, his escapes exactly. were that good, you know, like, and they, I remember he used to do a bunch of specific trainings 
And side control against him was never a fun thing, you know. Like, yeah. yeah. They but both, uh, they both get frustrated because they don't want. They cannot get the attack, and and for the person to attack you, they have to give up on on the space so they can try explore. With that hands right there, there's no options. So yeah, it's really cool. No, I fully agree. And guys, Fabio has one full instruction all about skates at bjjfanatics.com. So make sure to check that out, and also make check make sure to check this guy out too, yeah. Marcus Chinoco. Uh, in my opinion, the best last cigar in Jiu-Jitsu. Hope you guys enjoyed it, guys. So, so Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel. Just click subscribe. And to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed. BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your Jiu-Jitsu faster.